Greetings brothers, this week we're talking about the 10 top Blood Angels units you can include to make the best army list you can in 10th edition of Warhammer 40,000, so let's get straight into it. So welcome to the weekly tactics video, I am John and this is the Blood Angels Commander channel and every week we'll tell you how to get the most out of your Blood Angels on the tabletop. So let's start with unit number one this week. It is Inceptors, and what's so good about them? Well, they have Meteoric Descent, which lets them deep strike within three inches of an enemy. You cannot charge when you do that deep strike, excuse me, but that makes them insanely difficult to screen. The twin-linked plasma that they have are strength 8 with minus 3 AP. It's two shots per guy. And if you are going into enemy elites and armor, the twin-linked is going to provide a ton of value. You can run both their receptors to remove chaff um, and also potentially steal weak enemy home objectives if they had something like cultists standing out and doing an objective. I guess they're not going to do all that well against those sustained hit two bolters. Uh, they have high mobility with a 10 inch move. Obviously their guns are assault and pistols, meaning shooting in close combat and shooting after advancing. And they're pretty survivable due to Gravis. So most people say do not leave home without a squad of Inceptors or two in your list. And they are very useful in Blood Angels or other Space Marine chapters for the moment. Number two on this list or top 10 is scouts and there's no particular order as we go through here all 10 of these units from the top 10 could be included in your army list let's talk about scouts they're brilliant action units because they get guerrilla tactics meaning at the end of your opponent's turn if they're more than six inches away you can just lift them off the battlefield you put them in strategic reserve so every single turn they can move around really really effectively they're not really a combat unit so you're probably going to try and be six inches away doing stuff like investigating signals teleport homers engaging all fronts behind enemy lines there's so many different things that these guys can do and they also can ha carry shotguns and if they carry shotguns then that gives them basically assault weaponry so they can move their six inches they can advance and they can perform actions so there's multiple ways you can really get these scouts all around the board they also have infiltrate and a scout move letting them hold objectives from turn one and move block the enemy if you want to do that in turn one as well um the scout move also means that after you have infiltrated them you can move them back a bit if you uh if you need to if you don't feel that they're super safe and two wounds now per model actually surprises some enemies so in cover they're not too bad save four up two wounds per model they're not a combat unit if you are playing the blood angels you might want to put some combat knives on them that actually makes them the best they can be probably with three attacks per scout it would be four in the charge and strength six on the charge so i've been forgetting that strength six that actually means that they could actually wound some high toughness armor or even even they could even wound elites reasonably effectively with these combat knives. So run these guys in five, 65 points, very, very decent. Let's move on to unit number three today, which is our Ball Predator. And a lot of people are running Ball Predators. They are Flamestorm Cannon is maybe the main reason to take it. D6 plus three, strength six, minus two, two damage, ignores cover and torrent, which means auto hits. If you advance, you can reroll your advance. It moves 12. And if you target infantry, which you're probably going to target, because let's face it, you're probably running a lot of flamers on this, um, then you can get the assault weapon on your flamers. So, they can really shut down enemy infantry movement with that flamestorm cannon. That's basically the same profile as the Redeemer Sponson, but it's got six more inches. So not quite the same firepower as a Redeemer, and the Redeemer is two of those, but... Six more inches makes a big difference. There's a lot of times 12 inches isn't enough for flamers. 18 makes it pretty nice, especially after being able to advance and shoot. It's fast moving. It's reasonably survivable with T10. And it's a relatively low points cost, 125 points. One of the cheapest actual armor units that we can build. And it's going to kill a lot of infantry. And it's going to potentially just kill elites as well. And that's probably one of the things it's good at because... Strength 6 means into like Terminators, into uh, Custodes, these are actually pretty good, minus 2 to damage, straight away putting them in the invulnerable save, so I think these get a lot of play because of the units that they can take out, and also because of the cheapness and their points costs. Okay, let's move on and let's talk about Land Raider Redeemer, it is a great model, uh, it's one that I've run 6 times now I think in the Sons of Sanguinius Detachment, and I am at 6 wins 
playing it. Uh, obviously, anything inside it can disembark after it has made its normal move of 12, which means move 12, disembark within 3, and then make a charge, meaning anything inside it, including super slow units like aggressors or centurions, can, can really enjoy the benefit from a land raider redeemer. It's oppressive when it comes to killing infantry with two of those. So 2d6 plus 6 auto hits. Uh, I think I used this to kill nine Dire Avengers a few weeks ago. I think it killed nine Plague Marines uh, the week after that. Like, it's super deadly. It shuts down enemy infantry. And if you use Smokescreen and Armor of Contempt on it, you can ignore two EP and make it minus one to hit. And when you do that, a Toughness 12 vehicle with minus one to hit and ignoring two AP can actually be kind of oppressive in terms of like taking it out. So it's got amazing transport capacity. You can get six Gravis, a character, or you can get six Blade Guard veterans and a character. And then with the Blade Guard, you have seven left. You can actually put two sixes uh, inside, which I think is amazing. Fast moving 12 inches, uh, smoke screen and armor of contempt. And then it's got just a crazy amount of anti-infantry flyer, including its overwatch. If your opponent makes a mistake, and moves anything within 12 inches of this. Even armor can take damage because 2d6, who should average seven plus six, so you get 13 auto hits. So even if you're going into toughness 10 armor, it's probably worth the one CP for the 13 auto hits. You're probably gonna make them save like three or four times at minus two for two damage. And then you'd be hoping that maybe the multi melta or the assault cannon could sneak through another hit or something from the overwatch. So it's overwatching to just about anything is actually pretty good. And then let's talk about Death Company. This would be Death Company on foot without jump packs. Why are they good? Well, you would run them in a 10. 10, obviously, conveniently fit inside a Land Raider Redeemer. Especially, there needs to be an extra slot for a captain. Or, sorry, a chaplain. No problem. These guys benefit a lot from having the chaplain. It gives them objective control and allows them to fall back. There's a uh, stratagem for the Blood Angels detachment that lets you fall back and charge. You're, you're going to be wanting to fall back and charge and do lots and lots of damage with these guys. You get 40 attacks from 10 of them. Strength, 10 power fists from the 10 guys. And here's an interesting thing. If you do equip all 10 of them with plasma pistols and you shoot them all on high power and you fail one of your hazardous rolls, you actually want to fail one of your hazardous rolls, then the whole squad would get sustained hits one because they are no longer at full strength. If you get sustained hits one from one guy dying and you have nine guys alive, statistically, you actually get more attacks right because you would roll a bunch of sixes with your sustained hits one apparently with 36 dice which is what you would have uh you should roll six sixes which takes you up to 42 attacks and then you're re-rolling all your hits as well so you should get another couple of sixes so you should actually get somewhere in the region of four to six bonus attacks from their sustained hits one if you kill one of your own models with the plasma pistols and obviously that does give you uh what would that be? 10, strength 8, minus 3, 2 damage, plasma pistols as well. These guys do kind of need the transport and the chaplain to be top tier, but we actually saw a tournament list recently running 10 of these guys inside a Rhino, and they are, I think they're pretty good. Um, I prefer running them with jump packs myself, but overall, it's a real quirky strategy with the plasma pistols, but you can't really argue with the strength 10 power fists. They are the best that Blood Angels can do right now, strength 10 power fists, really. I know you can get better profiles, suppose, on a Centurion, but having the weight of attacks from the Death Company with the baked in rerolls, not needing to use your Oath of Moment, is just generally very, very strong. Okay, so if you are enjoying today's video, then please leave a like or consider subscribing. I look at my analytics this week and see that we did like 38,000 views recently on the channel. And apparently 16,000 of them are coming from people who are not subscribed. So tell me in the comments what I have to do to get you to click the subscribe button because I'm trying to provide value every week. I'm trying to teach you a few things. If there's something that I'm doing that's upsetting you, let me know. But if if you've got here and you think I watched John a couple of times and he's us usually giving me some useful info, come on guys. 42% of the views are coming from not subscribed. What can I do? What can I do? I'd like to get to 20,000 subscribers. Help me out. And remember to click the bell notification if you want to always be updated every time I release a new video. So Jump Pack, Death Company, they are the next guys on the list. And obviously they also roll those Strength 10 Fower Fists with re-rolls baked in from the Black Rage. They re-roll charges as well. If you Rapid Ingress them, and I talked about that on last week's Tactics video, which I will link at the end of this video, 
if you use Rapid Ingress with these guys, it's very easy to get them in, into range to get a bunch of damage from your Infernal Pistols. Arguably, these are our best melee unit for damage output in 10th edition, along with the Death Company we just talked about. These guys might be a little bit better just because they're a little bit faster, so they are actually able to get from unit to unit throughout the course of a battle. And these guys benefit loads from Chaplains or Lamartas. I'll do a video on best characters later. But for now, these are probably my favourite unit. I'm running 15 in my list. I did see a tournament list basically running 30. So you want at least 15 of these. Uh, probably a 10 and a 5 in every Blood Angels list. They are the best unit that we have right now for melee damage. Okay, Librarian Dreadnought. And I bet you guys all thought that I would not included this in my top 10. Because it let me down in a key moment in a tournament. But I have included it because I do actually think that Winds of Sanguinius is one of the strongest abilities in the game. It synergizes crazy well with uh, shooting units. But it's also crazy good towards the end of the game where there's a lot of space in the battlefield. You could ping units around every turn. On a two-up, you just lift up a unit and put it down somewhere else. That used to cost us a CP every single time we want to do that. You were doing it essentially for free well, 83% of the time with Wings of Sanguinius. The Librarian Dreadnought is actually pretty, pretty nasty in both shooting and melee. Like, his melee is 5 attacks at strength 12, plus an extra attack at strength 9, which can do potentially 9 damage. And his shooting is, I think you should equip him with a Melter Gun. So you have a Melter Gun that could potentially do 8 damage if you got a bit of luck within 6 inches, but D6 within 12. And then, I tend to just always overcharge this guy's uh, psychic power because he does have an ability that means if he does take mortal wounds from a failed psychic test he will get a five up feel no pain against them so generally if there's something you can shoot i just go focused witch fire that is strength 12 minus 3 d6 plus 3 and it sustained hits d3 so basically if you hit on a six you're getting d3 additional hits potentially nine damage out of each one of those as well and um, so his his melee and his uh shooting are both very decent and the thing about him is he usually gets stuck i feel like on your side of the battlefield because you want him on your side of the battlefield teleporting units around inevitably in most games the enemy will eventually get something in your side of the battlefield be it a deep striker be it something else and then he can react and mop them up with his crazy good melee and his crazy good shooting right his aura is also really nice against armies that do mortals or specific psychic matchups like thousand suns and gray knights i think he is a great unit you just need to be aware that there is an element of luck in running him, and that's probably one of the reasons that I have kind of edged away from him, and I prefer the Redeemer, but I think he is still a great unit. The more infantry units you have in your list, the more value you get from Wings of Sanguinius, the more solid shooting units you have in your list, the more value you get from Wings of Sanguinius. Okay, number eight, Bladeguard Veteran. There's a lot to say about Bladeguard. Um, I want to say by starting, like, forget their shooting. Uh, just forget it. They have bolt pistols. They're not here to shoot things. What they are here to do is stand on objectives, be obnoxiously difficult to kill, and do a very good amount of damage in melee combat. And they're one of the few units that can get a fight first ability. We need to add a character to make that happen. But if we do that, then they're really, really good. So their sword and shield buffs use at the right time add a ton of value. Basically, if you make the charge or if you are fighting first, Sword of Sanguinius means you can reroll hits of one. So you hit on threes, rerolling ones. It gives you basically 11% more chance to hit. You move from a 66 to 77. It's good. And then I guess if you are being attacked first, then you've got Shield of the Chapter. Did I call it Sword of Sanguinius? I think they renamed this a couple of times. Sword of the Chapter, Shield of the Sh Chapter. Um, you basically re-roll your invulnerable saves when you roll a 1. Now what that actually does is, if you think of 4 up invulnerable save as a 50% chance to save, this actually increases your chance to save to 56%. So these are two fight phase abilities that are really powerful. 6% more chance to save or 11% more chance to hit. Once you've played a few games and you know when to use these things, I think they're both really, really good abilities. Uh, these guys get a lot of survivability for the points you pay for them. You get 180 points, you get six guys with three wounds each with the four up, obviously with that ability in the fight phase to make them stronger. Um, and then even the three man isn't bad. If you just have 90 points at the end of a list, if the enemy ever tries to put like a weak unit onto an objective and you are just holding that objective with three blade guard, 
Three Blade Guard and the Blood Angel's attachment will still eat a unit alive, right? That's going to be 15 attacks on the charge. Obviously, you can reroll your ones to hit if you need to. And um, there'll be strength 7 minus 2, 2 damage. So these guys will probably mop up most of a squad of intercessors in a single turn, just three of them. Six of them will actually kill like three Terminators statistically or something like that. And um, I think that the points you pay for them, they're very, very decent. Their biggest weakness, I suppose, is just their three at base save, meaning I guess they are a little bit vulnerable to low AP weaponry. And their toughness four, I guess they're a little bit vulnerable to low strength weaponry. But I usually try and have them in cover. I usually try and have them out of line of sight. I usually have them charging out of a land raider or there's just three of them standing on a side field objective that could even be teleported there by Librarian Dreadnought or something. But I think these guys are very, very strong. I think... I did say a while ago I might run two squads of six if I had the models. Uh, I was off that, but I do think that there's definitely a place in everybody's list for sixth blade guard heading up the middle of the board, holding a difficult-to-hold objective, being survivable, doing good damage. I think they're a top, top-tier unit. I really, really like them. I uh, also want to talk about Vindicators as number nine. Um, a lot of people swear by double Vindicator tank. And I think if you run double Vindicator tank and they can both hit the same target and you both have a moment that target, then it is usually dead. Because this thing is swingy with an average of 6.5 shots from its demolisher cannon. That is a strength 14 minus three. Um, now, when it swings low... It's only four shots, but when it swings high, and I've had a few games on stream where it swings high, so it's like eight shots or nine shots, we get nine strength 14 hits, um, and it could be even more if you hit like a target that you benefit from blast, it kind of becomes a bit crazy, especially with Oath of Moment. Uh, it doesn't have the greatest range, a nine inch move, a 24 inch demolisher cannon, and that's probably its biggest weakness. But when it swings in your favor, it's like, damn, does it do damage. It's also pretty darn survivable with that 2-up save and the Toughness 11 being a nice break point, meaning uh, Strength 10 weaponry only wounds it on 5s. Uh, it can benefit from a smoke screen. It can benefit from Armor of Contempt. A lot of people have been running Double Vindicator. It can also use that Seed Shield, meaning it can shoot that Strength 14 Demolisher Cannon into engagement range, obviously just with minus one to hit. But if you're happy to Oath of Moment, that target, you're still going to be killing models. Uh, I like the Vindicators a lot. I don't have them in my current list, but I did take two to the tournament that I went to. Uh, I don't really have a problem with them. I think they're, I think they're a great unit. Um, Definitely something I would rate as a top 10 Blood Angels unit. And then number 10 on this list, you might have thought it was going to be Heavy Intercessors. And it could have been, but I've chosen Infiltrators. Because I think that in the competitive scene, we see a lot of people highly rating Infiltrators due to their screening. Basically making a 12-inch bubble around the squad. Now, all five members of the squad just need to be in coherency within two inches of each other. So if you actually daisy chain these guys five along, you could actually get them to spread out because uh, the four gaps would be eight inches. Their bases are more than an inch each and then 12 inches there. So you can really screen out like a 20, give or take, uh, inch circle here diameter. Uh, which is very good against pesky nerglings, which I've said always seem to find their way into your backfield to do some teleport homers. So these guys can also infiltrate, making them potential move blockers. They can smoke screen as well to give them additional survivability. They also, I recommend taking the helix gauntlet to give them that six up, feel no pain. Um, and I guess it just 20 points more than regular intercessors, while it is a bit, you know, intercessors do have their advantages as well. I think that being able to screen a big unit or screen a big area of the map make it very difficult for your opponent to drop in is very powerful. Now, some people run two squads of infiltrators, and when you run two squads of infiltrators and you daisy them out, you can basically completely control your backfield, saying nothing is going to deep strike in there. That is a bit costly, and I think it is much harder to do with one squad, but I still think infiltrators are a very, very powerful unit. And I guess if you're a Blood Angels player that wants to throw everything forward in turn one or try and get loads of charges, try and get everything far forward, then Infiltrators preventing anything coming into your backfield is kind of huge. So that's why I've included them as a top 10 Blood Angels unit. So the ones that just missed the cut, and you might have seen me playing a bunch of these units, 
and I do like all of them. The Predator Destructor, I think, is a very good tank. I really like its minus additional AP against infantry. I like Heavy Intercessors. I think they're brilliant at holding objectives. Um, very durable against one damage weaponry. The Ballista Dreadnought is very points costed. Got some good baked in rerolls, got some good range, good on tank shock. Uh, some Ballista Dreadnoughts, like two of them potentially, can really back up a Blood Angel's melee combat list with very little shooting support or very cheap shooting support. It would only be 280 points to include two Ballistas. That gives you four LAS cannons a turn, that gives you four strength 10 crack missiles a turn. It's very good as well. Vanguard Veterans just missing out, fast moving, shields, potentially at strength 7. Can be attached to the Sangry Priest as well, so they get like the 5 up Feel No Pain. Uh, I think they're a good unit. I think, in my opinion, Death Company just pipped them a little bit. But Vanguard Veterans almost in the, crept into the top 10. And then finally, Gladiator Lancers. And I think Gladiator Lancers are amazing at shooting other armies that do not have invuns. Uh, big, I guess, um, other marine armies or any sort of heavy armor potentially like Tau or something that doesn't have an invulnerable save is going to take a ton of damage from that main cannon. However, when you start shooting demons or big monsters or armies with four up invuns like Votan potentially, then you start having some problems with the Gladiator Lancer. They don't have enough shots potentially to get the most out of it and maybe uh, other other units become better. And so these are the ones that I just missed out this week, um, all of which I think are totally viable. Uh, I'm actually running predators and heavy intercessors in my army list and I'm, I'm on a six game win on the tabletop tactics I, I keep talking about this I'm trying to get into the top 10 of the tabletop tactics app I think it's a great thing it's an open league you can join it all you need to do is download the tabletop tactics app on your phone uh, big shout out to those guys making the open league I think it works really really well so these are the units that just missed out and that's pretty much it for this week's tactics video. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I hope you consider liking. And if you're one of the 42% that's still not subscribed, then please think about doing that. Uh, you can obviously support the channel here on YouTube by clicking that big join button or over on Patreon. And basically for the price of a cup of coffee or less than a price of a cup of coffee because inflation's made cups of coffee insane, then you support me and help me make brilliant content every week and entertain you guys thank you so much to everybody that does that week on week month on month your support is really appreciated i will catch you probably this weekend for some live painting or if not in next week's battle report or tactics video by the blood are we made strong my friends peace